the multi-store model of memory. So for the specification, you need to be aware of the features of short-term and long-term memory. So that is the coding capacity and duration. For the completeness of the model, I'll go through the features of sensory memory. So sensory memory is named because it comes from our senses. Therefore, it codes. So the way it stores the information is in each of the different senses. The capacity of short uh, sensory memory is unlimited. OK, that is because we have all the information around us coming in at the same time. So it has to have a very large capacity. It has to be able to hold a lot of information. However, the duration, so the length of time that it can hold that information is very minimal, extremely brief. So it's approximately a quarter to half a second long. In terms of our short term memory, then our coding is mainly acoustic. And that was by Badley that found that we um, encode acoustically for short term memory, but they also found for long term memory that we store information generally in a semantic way. However, we can discuss uh, the strengths and weaknesses of this study. So the fact that it was a lab experiment means that it is reliable because we can replicate it and it has high internal validity. But due to the artificial nature of the task, it lacks mon mundane realism. It means that we can't really apply it to everyday memory. So therefore, it will lack ecological validity. So we don't know if we can apply the findings to outside of the research setting. Moving on to the capacity for short term memory, Jacobs found that our short term capacity was between five to nine items. So he found it was on average 9.3 numbers that we can remember in our short term memory and 7.3 letters. So therefore the five to nine items. This was further um, developed by Miller that came up with the idea that our capacity is seven plus or minus two items. Now this can be improved by chunking. So we can group information together. So instead of remembering a series of numbers, if we group those together, so like you do with a, with a phone number, if you group them together in say three digits, then it's easier to remember more information than just remember them single numbers in a row. Now again, the problem with Jacob's study is that it was conducted in the 1800s. So a very long time ago. Therefore, we don't know whether there was control over extraneous variables. Also, again, quite an artificial task, having to remember a series of numbers and letters, not like our memory in everyday life. Therefore, might not explain how short term memory is in the real day. Also, Miller might have overestimated the chunking of seven to nine item, um, seven to nine items yeah so cohen actually says that we might only have four chunks of information in our short-term memory now we don't really have any research for long-term memory but it's believed that our capacity for long-term memory is unlimited so once information has reached our long-term memory we can store it as much information as possible there is no limit to how much we can store in our long-term memory now, short term memory in terms of our duration is approximately 18 to 30 seconds. So this was Peterson and Peterson study, which got participants to remember a consonant trigram. So uh, three consonants together. So, for example, T, X, Y. They then had to count backwards from a three digit number in threes, and they were asked to recall their trigram after three seconds, six seconds, nine seconds, and so forth. Again, a highly artificial task and situation. Therefore, it does lack mundane realism, has low external validity, low ecological validity. Benefits of it being a lab experiment though, high internal validity so it is likely that he was measuring short-term memory and not anything else also the control setting reduces extraneous variables 
Our long term memory, then, in terms of its duration, is meant to be unlimited. So Barak et al. did the experiment with the yearbook and got participants to either recall their classmates or have a recognition test. And it's found that it was 70% accurate on a photo rec recognition test even after 48 years. So even after that amount of time had passed, people were still able to recognise former classmates. Now this study generally has a higher external validity because it was testing a meaningful memory as opposed to the other experiments that generally used artificial tasks this was testing real life memory it was testing people's memory of their former classmates however it was only taste testing facial recognition so it's a very specific type of memory so there might be uh, problems with that also there could have been extraneous variables for example some people might have met up with their classmates more regularly than others it's hard to work out whether it was a true test of recognition for that amount of time or if people had met up with their classmates or remained friends with them in that time period so let's look at some example questions you could be asked you might be given a list of statements or information and you have to input them in the correct part of the table so A is 7 plus or minus 2, so that is the capacity of our short term memory. B, up to 30 seconds without rehearsal. So this is the Peterson and Peterson finding, so that's our duration of short term memory. Mainly acoustic, so this is to do with encoding or coding, if you refer to as either way. So that's how information is stored. Now, if we think back to um, Badley's research, we remember that encoding in short term memory is acoustic, so that will go in that section. Equally, you could be given a table like this where you have to write the information in yourself. So you haven't been given the information, you need to be able to remember it and put it in the correct place. So A is sensory register, that is sensory memory, and it's capacity. So the capacity of sensory memory is unlimited so you'd write that there short-term memory duration so how long we can hold information in our short-term memory is approximately 18 to 30 seconds so we'd write that in the b section c short-term memory coding so that's how we store information so that is mainly acoustic long-term memory d encoding or coding is mainly semantic so moving on to the multi-store model of memory, so our AO1, so that's our description of the model. So the multi-store model of memory describes three separate stores of models of memory, hence multi-store. Now they are sensory memory or sensory register, short-term memory and long-term memory. It believes that each of those stores are unitary, so they are a single store it's one store and it's believed that the model is linear so information moves in a linear process information comes into our sensory memory or sensory register through our environmental input so sights sounds smells things that are going on around us now as we mentioned before it has a very brief duration and in order for information to move from our sensory memory into our short term memory, we need to have paid attention to it. If we fail to pay attention, then we simply forget the information. So if we paid attention, information has moved to short term memory. As we mentioned before, short term memory, our capacity is about five to nine items. It's got a short duration of 18 to 30 seconds and it's mainly acoustic in the way we store information. So in order to move information from our short term memory to our long term memory, we need to rehearse the information. If we fail to rehearse the information, we will forget it. And this can happen in two ways. We can simply have it through to decay, which is where we haven't rehearsed it. And due to the limited duration, 
we have that decay of, inf uh, of the memory, the information. So without maintenance rehearsal, after 30 seconds, it is less likely that we will be able to hold on to that memory. It can happen through displacement due to the limited capacity of five to nine items. So if we have new information come into our short term memory and we haven't moved information into our long term memory, then it gets pushed out. So it's almost like having a glass of water almost filled to the top. And when you add more water to that, it overflows. So it simply can't hold on to the information. So therefore we forget it. Our long term memory. Now, this is where we talk about um, capacity being unlimited. Duration is potentially up to a lifetime and coding or encoding is semantic. So due to meaning of word. Now, sometimes we need to retrieve that information via the STM. If we fail to retrieve then it leads to forgetting. Now we'll discuss that at a later date, why we sometimes do have fa failure to retrieve the information. So sometimes it's like, I've learned that information, but I can't access it. And we'll look at that due to an absence of cues in a later date. So you might get a question like this, outline the main features of the multi-store model for six marks. So this is just simply the description of the model. No need to talk about evaluation in this, it's just the outline. So it could, it's just simply saying describe the multi store model of memory. You could get a diagram where you have to fill in the correct parts. So A is our sensory memory or sensory register, B is long term memory, C is the rehearsal loop or maintenance rehearsal. So moving on to our evaluation. Now, this is a theory or an explanation. So we could use the acronym of SCOUT to help us with our leading phrases to make it crystal clear to the examiner you are evaluating. So, for instance, I could start off my peel paragraph, my elaborated evaluation point by saying a strength of the multi-store model is there is supporting research from badly. For example, they suggested that STM and LTM are separate stores of information because they code information differently. In short term memory, we mainly encode or code information acoustically, whereas it was discovered that in LTM, we encode semantically. This supports the claims of the model that short term memory and long term memory are separate stores for information. Similarly, we could use the case study of Clive Waring. So his short term memory was impaired. It was only seven seconds long, whereas he had some long term memory still intact. So he could still remember how to play the piano. Again, the fact that his short term memory was damaged, but his long term memory was still OK, suggests that they are two separate stores of information. However, we have contradictory evidence. So the model suggests that long term memory is a single unitary store. However, Tolving suggests that actually our long term memory is made up of three different types. So we have semantic memories, episodic memories and procedural memories. So this goes against the claim of the model that they are single stores. Also, we can compare it to the working memory model. So it could be that our multi-store model of memory is just too simplistic to be able to explain memory. Again, it's saying that short term memory is a single store. The working memory model states that our short term memory is made up of different components. So for we have ones that do our verbal tasks. So our phonological loop. And we have ones that do our visual tasks, so our visual spatial sketchpad. Also, the model doesn't take into account flashbulb memories or why sometimes we simply remember things we haven't seemed to rehearse them. So why some things are easier to remember than others. 
However, the model is useful. It has real world applications. So it can be used for educational policies or for teachers. So during teacher training, they might be told that students need to have to rehearse information in order for them to be able to retrieve information. Therefore, this will inform their planning so they can plan lessons or schema work that constantly revisit material to help with the recall. This in turn will impact on psychology in the economy. So AQA would like it if you can make those synoptic links. So why would this be beneficial to the economy? Well, if people are able to remember information from their education and studies for longer, then that will mean they will be more effective employers and increase the benefit to the economy. However, we have issues with the way that the, this has been tested. So most of the research that supports the model have been done in lab based settings and have used artificial materials such as the consonant trigrams. Therefore, it lacks mundane realism, lacks external validity, and it might not actually explain memory in everyday life, which weakens the assumptions of the model. So the model might work in a lab based setting but it might not actually explain memory in the real world. So if we have a look at some 16 mark questions you could be asked. So outline and evaluate features of memory. This is where you would discuss uh, encoding capacity and duration and the evaluation of those studies. Discuss research into short term memory. So remember the word discuss means outline and evaluate or describe and evaluate. So it's simply describe and evaluate research into short term memory. So again, you discuss research that has looked at short term memory. So I would discuss Peterson and Peterson's duration of short term memory and evaluate it. I would outline and evaluate Badley's research into encoding into short term memory and evaluate it. I would talk about Jacob's study into the capacity of short term memory and evaluate it. Equally, you could be asked a 16 marker on the multi store model of memory. So describe and evaluate the multi store memory, refer to evidence in your answer. So remember, you'd have two AO1 paragraphs. I would have my first paragraph describing the model so that it recognises that there's three separate stores of memory that it's a linear process, that each store is a single store. I would talk about each store in terms of its capacity, duration and encoding. My second AO1 point, I would discuss how information is transferred from each store. So how information moves from sensory memory to short term memory to long term memory. And what happens if that doesn't happen at each stage? So how forgetting happens? Then I would move on to my three to four evaluation points about the model.